Hello and welcome to another video from me, Chris at DBG. So we are talking about week 10 and the prospects of week 11. Let's see how we did on our week 10. Um, and let's see how players I think are going to perform next week as well. Okay, so <laughs> last week I predicted that this week was going to be tough. Uh, and yeah, it was. <laughs> it's got 120 points, which isn't too shabby. Um, and could have beaten a lot of other teams that were in our league as well. But not good enough to beat who is ranked first now. Um is Dak the future so let's have a look at how it went Borough not Borough Borough is out on a buy which massively drastically affects my team but this has some good players and also had some players that didn't perform anywhere near where they should have so Carr got 17 points respectable for Carr very respectable Dak got 18 points very respectable for Dak Chubb, 14. No Chubb. We need more from that. Um, that was a setback straight away for me. Aaron Jones, 22 points. He had a blinding game against um, Dallas, but then almost everyone did in Green Bay. It was, it was a good game, and Dallas... Somehow lost that loss. Somehow lost the lead. I don't. I don't know how what happened there. Um, as a Dallas fan, I'm, I'm disappointed. But it is what it is. Dale Hansen, eleven points, respectable, but more or less droppable now. Um, that backfield is nothing I want to do with. Sequan Barkley, twenty-two points. Actually, two points less than what is predicted. Predicted, but I think twenty-four is is way off anyway. Um, Hopkins performing well um, be, see what happens when more comes back and 19 points counted that at Chris Godwin and 19 points as well which was good by him Curtis Samuel only 5 points that's where I needed some points I thought he was going to get more upside um, and I thought the Washington was just going to throw the ball massively against Philadelphia by being in a horrendous position but they didn't they won the game so how i don't know how that happened either <laughs> so ron mace um Robinson brown 21 points doing fantastic for lions there schultz great game 17 points really high for a tight end drop everett only four points not getting yeah, much volume there at the moment but jonathan taylor and this is even though i lost the game and taking this as positive 23 points could he be back i got him ranked about sixth um largely because there's some big players out on the buys of week 11 but i think respectable it could be the start of things to go and perfect timing for playoffs people could still be nervous about his good results so he might be worth a trade but it is risky on earth Slayton getting the touchdown right didn't really do much prior to that um but 18 points nevertheless really good debo i am concerned about debo with the amount of weapons that are out there now um i got him ranked as 18th in my top in my wide receivers for week 11. josh allen performing excellent 21 points 49 is eight points defense and cardinals 10 defense Anyone could change it on? Not really. But going forward, then Jefferson with Cooper Cup out. Ooh, yeah, he could be a good play. So I might put him in. Um, Mitchell getting good result as well, coming off IR and actually split in the backfield which is what you expect from 49ers anyway but cmc does not dominate there um which is what you sort of would expect to be interesting going forward everyone else nothing really changed the game for me 
to be honest, are way too low points, but it is what it is. Next, Badlands and Tampa. 117 and 129, respectable scores, but it always has to be a winner, more or less it's a draw, which annoys me at the best of times. But <laughs> Hurts, 21 points, Goff, 14, yeah, it's Goff, he's going to do something, mistake. Eckler really held, and pretty much 49ers were all over him all game. Christian McCaffrey, 16 points, really good, respect, respectably will... I think he'll be getting that more or less touch time um, dependent on the upside, but does have potential. Eckler, it's just a tough game. He'll come through now. Devin Montgomery, only four points, but I'd expect that to be a lot better now considering um, uh, Herbert is now injured, so he'll have majority of the run play unless Fields decides he doesn't have any running backs. Josh Jacobs back with 21 points. Going really well. Um, let's see if that's going to keep going forward. Diggs, 24 points. Very respectable, but way outplayed by C.A. Lamb with 38 points. He was pretty much the main and only target um, for big plays and essential plays for uh, Prescott, which pretty much sums it up, unless they get a number one receiver. Is rumours that Beckham might be there. Yeah, Odell, Odell Beckham might be there. But don't know yet. DK Metcalf, 13 points, respectable. He is splitting touch it, touches with Tyler Lockett, but he is doing really well. <sighs> Mara Cooper, it's, it's hit or miss, isn't it? You're either going to get loads or nothing at all. Be interesting when the main quarterback comes back. TJ Hopkins getting used to that player in Minnesota. He is going to be bigger and better every week. Zach Ertz is now injured and it could be some length of time so you need to start looking for a tight end quick for a replacement and equally with Dallas Goddard as well 10 points has been performing outstanding both of these tight ends have been performing outstanding um, but he is now on IR so you expect at least 4 weeks you mean with Smith I don't really rate him to be honest um, in this offense, I don't think there's enough um, passing attempts to go round. Um, they have, but with Goddard injured, I'd expect him to step up and solid wide receiver two option there. Kenyon Pickett, 18 points, was not expecting that, but it seems that anyone playing the Saints is going to be performing quite well at the moment. And Jay Zone, um, Zay Jones. Going from wide receiver in, in the OP spot at 14 points, very respectable. Bills, three points, and Saints, five points. Anyone on the bench that could have done anything? Well, unfortunately, no. <laughs> this is the main option. Could have won by more. That, that's the only thing. But would you put Higby in instead of Zach Ertz? No. Mainly, like, running two tight ends, I don't know. Um, Murray injured as well is definitely going to affect things going forward. Marcus Brown should be coming back, but it depends if he's back on injury better. Um, McKinnon, that is a three-way split between running backs at the moment, and I want to stay away from it because it's too much of a gamble to know who is going to be the main lead, basically, and it's all touchdown dependent. Lowest scoring game, and I wanted to be paired up with one of these, but unfortunately not this week. Um, we have Hollywood Hitman and Ramsgate Raiders. Fields, he's <laughs> smashing it. He's just decided he wants to run, score, and maybe throw an occasional pass, but not much. All by himself at 38 points. Mahomes just throws and has amazing accuracy at the moment. And he's got a plethora of wide receivers. It's hard to predict which wide receiver is going to going to hit off that week for you but you can always rely on Holmes getting 13 points there um, Alvin Kamara not getting the volume on this game and I'm a bit concerned going forward maybe he was worrying about his court case that has been delayed uh, by my research until next year so the time that he'll probably get suspended um, 
it looks to be in the off season of 2023 so if you're worried about court case affecting his fantasy uh i should pretty safe to set then nothing's going to be in there and the nfl hasn't made a decision so far to put any of their own suspensions in so i wouldn't expect it this season anyway giving him free to play this year could be a good run for playoffs but if he's scoring six points and not getting volume it's going to be problems going forward especially because they're playing against pittsburgh uh, miles sanders only five points but the potentials is there unfortunately they were trading quite nicely with washington points would expect him to got more but just didn't get the volume king henry just showing that he's human and that he can't carry Dem um tennessee by himself even against denver only eight points but he should be going forward doing quite well marius murray is seven points yeah it is what it is but we'll see what's going forward for him and AJ Brown only getting two points, but it wasn't. Yeah, I don't know what happened. He <laughs> wasn't on the field that much. Um, let's see what's going to happen there. Equally, DJ Moore. Now, with all the quarterback issues, I, I don't, I don't know what you expect going forward. He's it, it too for fantasy. It, he's either going to get you great points or none at all and be a wide receiver free at best um there is no there is no flaw for him and um, there's only real upside so it's dependent gamble really daniel mooney only nine points getting something but are not really enough and the bizarre still coming off injury so i would expect him to be back um, better next year carl pitts I've, i'm done with him to be honest he was is a bust of the year isn't he um could that all change you hope it does is he droppable yeah unfortunately he is he's not getting the volume he's not getting the plays he's not he's not even getting seen in the touchdowns at the moment so we know what to do Pat, only seven points. He's still a big target at Pittsburgh, but it's Pittsburgh. They are struggling all over the place in the passing game at the moment. Got old Patterson. They had great potential of getting so many points off the run game against Carolina. Um, but they got shut down. That is basically it. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Chase uh, Claypool, he is making people the offense think or the defense think about him um is fields thinking about him no <laughs> but it's freeing up space and people are chasing him down and that's just giving fields more time to run himself at the moment any dalton only six points he's not really a viable quarterback at the moment Aaron Rodgers, obviously against Dallas, was expecting it to be steamrolled by Dallas defense, but actually they did incredibly well and had some great plays um, by long, long balls to young wide receivers. 18 points, Bucks at 8 points, and Giants 8 points in defense respectively. On the bench, could anything have changed it? Yes. Um, or could, would you? maybe you were to put Williams instead of Dalton um, but you'd expect more than 6 points with Dalton to be honest would you expect more than 11 yeah he would have um, going forwards Swift's not obviously 100% so John Williams is definitely viable uh, Kenny is Tony has a great upside he is he's a great talent there um just didn't want to stay healthy or wasn't healthy or told his team he wasn't healthy when he was at giants but obviously at kansas city he is saying other things and they're performing and getting space like i said there's so much wide receivers options in kansas city 
uh, not Kansas City, yeah, uh, Chiefs, um, that you just don't know who is going to get that massive upside or touchdowns in a moment. Can you put anyone in? Maybe, maybe we'll just swap to him for Claypool, but high risk, high reward, 18 points, but it wouldn't have made any difference on the game other than just win more. Oriental Lovers was on a winning streak, but unfortunately, 91's not going to cut it. And Matthew, of all the dump, 107 points, just snuck into the lead. Had some players that pulled through that wasn't expecting it to. Gina Smith, 19 points. Everyone's waiting for this Gina Smith to just crash, but he seems to be performing incredibly well at the moment. Jimmy G, with the amount of options he's got around him, he's always going to get you... you your sturdy points is it going to be long and loads of volume no um, but he is going to get the plays there swift i say he's not 100 percent. he's not getting the game the the plays at the moment or the volume is that going to likely to change going forward i do reckon so but it could be too late if you're relying on him to get you to the playoffs at the moment. So it might be worth trying to trade to someone who's already got the playoffs. Try and get a player that's going to get you there. Even Smith, it doesn't care who he is running against. Good teams, bad teams. He's doing incredibly well at the moment. Benjamin um, has gone there. Um, is that really going to affect him? I don't think so. Um, I think he's done too well to get that number one spot. He's sticking to it. AJ Dillon, yeah, you were expecting uh, Jones to, to coming off his injury that you're going to get some points, but nothing there. Jeremy Wannan, um, Najee Harris is dealing with an injury now, has been announced, so I'd expect more volume going forward from him. He got 10 points when Najee was having problems. Drake London, 14 points. Very respectable for the young rookie. Gabe Davis, 21 points. He is, I'd say he's more boom or bust. He hasn't got much of a high floor. But the problem is in Buffalo's offense, he's more likely to boom than he is bust because the opportunities are, are there. Um, so he's a great player, I think. At 21 points as well. Uh, Joshua Palmer, seven points was expecting more from there, but Cincinnati, not Cincinnati. 49 ish shut everything down. Feeling only nine points. Again, wasn't really, isn't really being seen in the um, end zone as you for, as our first thought of this year. Well, Greg, you were going to get good ball you've had a good target share going forward but dropped off don't know what's happening there hopefully something more Dawson Knox nine points doing particularly well or a tight end and um, Foreman 19 points from bust la last week to boom this week going forward he's getting the volume so you cannot not play him and um, he's definitely in my top 20 on week 11 on Dome Moore, 18 points. He's just a great, great asset to the team at the moment. And he's spreading the field, him and Hawkinson. But, um, obviously, for... Whoever's injured, I can't remember, on the team. Uh, he's coming back, so it'll be interesting moving forward. Brady, he's throwing it loads. You always expect at least a 15 floor, 15 floor of him. With a couple of bit of upside on points, so... 17 points respectable Brennan and Uke I do believe there is so much talent there that he can absolutely um, break out every week because every, every main defence will be looking at the line will be looking at Debo will be looking at Kittle um, it just depends if Jimmy G will have a couple of minutes to look forward um, to spot the break by Andrew Nuke. Raiders zero points. Wasn't really expecting that against Colts, but it is what it is. 
and only two points from Cowboys, which you're definitely not expecting from the Packers coming off their losses and now their win against Dallas. On the bench, could you put anyone who would have performed better? Uh, People Jones, I would have rated higher than Palmer, and I probably would going forward as well. Johnson, it's hard to bench Johnson because he's getting that volume, but I think he made the right decision there. Yeah, that's, that's probably the only change I would have made myself. I would have put Johnson instead of Palmer. Um, the difference is there is like three points or seven points, which is enough to win you the game anyway. So nothing you could have done. Next, Chicago. And Fennet. I know Fennet one is now first. Dak I played is now second. Sorry. Um, first overall. Sorry, he's first in East. Dak is first in the West Division. Hundred and twenty-eight points versus one hundred thirty-four. Poor Chicago. They really needed a win, but unfortunately didn't get it. They are close to not being able to get into playoffs now it is getting really tight as you can imagine in your leagues is as well daniel jones 17 points going forward i think i actually really rate him for week 11 um i think it could be a top 15 performance kurt um 15 points bit low for kurt but it's respectable Najee harris injured it's been nothing but disappointment this year entirely for you if you had him um Travis, it's the end you expect more, um, but can see shutting down. Only nine points. James Connor, 22 points. He is now purely the, um, the number one running back, but also there's really no depth in running back to give him any opposition now. Benjamin going. Expect sort of this, I wouldn't say 20, but expect sort of 18 points, I think, going forward for week 11. Um, Jeff Wilson, 21 points. Obviously, Miami on a bye. Um, it's going to be interesting. What I like going forward it is a, a split backfield with him and Mossar, but they're both getting the volume, they're both getting the opportunities. I'd expect both of them always being represented in the top 20 if you need to choose. If you've got one on your bench, you're probably playing them. Adams. Is the only really receptionist, receptionist. That's all right. <laughs> Receiver um, in Las Vegas uh, with Waller out. The, uh, you, it's Adams or not much else there. General Waddle back in reality of only ten points, but if you've got him, you're playing him. His upside is too good. The team is too good not to play him. So look at respectable thirteen points. It's just him and Metcalf pretty much consistently getting that. Juju spit it's Georgia. Juju. Um, only five points. It's hard to predict who's going to get the upside at Kansas. Like I said, Kittle, four points. Too much. There's so much going on there. I, I think he's going to struggle to get much of the ball. The upside is touchdown dependency. Travis Kelsey, who you can always rely on in Chiefs to be Holmes's go to. Uh, 20 points he's always going to get a ball he's always going to get a ball he's great Pittman 12 points but actually I really rate him going forward in the moment he's got large volume he is their lead wide receiver we'll see what it's like Justin Jefferson wow that week was what a game against Buffalo it's a tough defense one on the catches all sorts going on there Amazing game. Um, you know that Gabe, Gabe Davis. Yeah, that was that was that wasn't a touchdown. But nevertheless, um, wow, well, great. Thirty six points. He was all over the place. He was the main target. And to be fair, he was getting double coverage and still catching it with one arm. I add as well. Trevor Lawrence always got a bit of upside with his legs. Performed quite well against Kansas. I mean, he was despite the loss. Herbert, only 11 points. Disappointing for him. It'll be a shame, shame what's going to happen going forward. 
Broncos four points and Eagles seven respectable and dart and in their defenses on the bench Stafford obviously injured Herbert now injured Mostar 18 points I think you play him almost every week um, who would you have played him for to be honest Najee Harris <laughs> I think he is pretty much droppable until I see a change um, from him unfortunately with that one year game yeah yeah would have there we go that, is, that generally is a change I would have made so it is what it is but opportunities it's hard to bend someone you, you pick in the first round you always have that inkling this will be the week that they perform and then they don't and Antonio Gibson always got an upside of touchdowns in the moment with Washington. Um, let's see what it's like going forward. Mike Evans, hard to bench Mike Evans, but he is kind of an injury. And yeah, the week before wasn't performing well, but we look at the team. Probably the only one, probably Juju. Um, going forward, but we'll see. Still big score, 134. Um, everyone else, yeah, you wouldn't have changed anything. And the last game, Cleveland Steamers, 138, needed that win and definitely needed that win against Chip because he is chasing Chip to get ahead in the playoffs division as well. So, Score 138 79. And Chip's got an issue this week because he has a lot of Miami players. We'll talk about that. And I'm playing against him, so it'll be interesting. Marcus Mayota, 17 points. Not doing well, but getting what you want. Two are 23 points. He's having a blinding season. It's week 11 by, so it's interesting to see. You know, he got to prepare for that. A lot of big wide receivers and running backs. They're all going to be out. Devin Cook, 15, um, 15 predicted and 23 points. Really solid position by him. I think with Hopkinson's learning more and more to play, it just opens up more for him as well. Kenneth Walker was a little bit held back from Tampa Bay, but still respectable for 12 points. And the Fournette, he's not getting the pass. Um... Pass protection, pass plays, anything really um, compared to last year or even the early weeks. So see what it's like going forward. Tell our G, I think he's in the crisp of a crisp, in the cusp of a top thirty, maybe top twenty-five uh, push for week eleven, um, but it's hard to predict. Only five points in this week go. Christian Kurt back to boom <laughs> 35 at 31 points. It's hard to predict. I mean, you wouldn't have predicted it against um, the Chiefs, but we'll see what it's like. Cooper Cup, only three points. Obviously, he had the injury. Um, has he been put in IR? Oh, yeah, he is on injury reserve. What oh, a nice little picture of a bone now. <laughs> And um, so he is obviously out for four weeks. Uh, Christian Olave, Chris Olave, Olave, seven points. You'd expect more, but it, it was a bad game. Um, completely by, by Saints. Hill, 15 points. You always expect more, but 15 is realistic as well obviously on a buy so no drop there johnson he is the tight end jason hill isn't he's is a specialist a specific tight end that's only going to get you losses more than wins um johnson going forward i think is actually a really good tight end if it's on your waivers also at six points is what he is getting what he has predicted nothing more added to it from Tampa Bay and a tight end Tony Pollard he's doing remarkably well at the moment um, 
obviously going forward Elliot might be back for week 11 but they're going to be a split backfield at the best um, and he could obviously be on low volume and plays as well but Tony Pollard is getting the ball and doing well with it I think they need to just keep getting him the ball um, but as a team they do better especially against people and backers silly Judy he was injured so um, going forward the sun really performed well I, I just it's Russell Wilson let's be honest this old Denver team and they're just not performing at all and speaking of which Russell Wilson 13 points gets what's predicted um, that's not very good for a pullback in a Superflex League Owen Jones only 4 points not really much that he's going to do really he's just relying on a touchdown to get to be real to be relevant <sighs> uh, Seahawks one point not really doing that much and Titans doing incredibly well again anyone any defense against Denver at the moment will be getting some good points on the bench could things changed yes Steamers could have won by a lot more <laughs> that's pretty much it I mean I would have put Tannehill instead of Judy because um, I don't rate Judy at the, oh, instead of Jones and swapping around um, that's it I'll, that's the only thing I would have swapped but wouldn't have won you the game on the bench Brandon Cooks not really doing anything going forward Sutton could become more of a viable option with Judy out Terry McConnon Hickey loves him some Terry um, going forward Carson Wentz could be back it's hard to know why when they've been doing so well but I think that actually affects Terry more because Wentz more likely to spread it rather than tug it I hate a single wide receiver you know, Singleton yeah it is what it is we'll see what it's like he is hard to predict on Buffalo because they don't really have much of a running game per se but 15 points I think you're always going to get a good solid floor he's not injured but he has possibly been replaced he didn't really do much let's be honest um, you threw balls you blast it that's it this they have said he will start against Houston but Wentz is back yeah I don't know I can keep Hickey in I, I prefer him over Wentz as a for fantasy and 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 for general game of NFL but he didn't perform very well even though his team won and that is everything at the moment our standings are getting tighter and tighter I'm currently third hopefully he should pull off the win I am against um chip birds which he's got half his team on a buy this week um so but he has put some players in they're not ones you'd expect but christian wanson could explode so potential there uh, i don't think anyone else does <laughs> um but I remember my team when it was like this as well you know so it heals so Miami are obviously in the buys uh, Seahawks are in the buys so some massive teams as well and Tampa which we've also got a lot of teams on the buy and then Cooper Cup injured as well it's a bad time for Chip because he needs to um, get into the playoffs um, so we'll see 
see what's going to happen. So in playoff prediction at the moment is that I get in, get there. Um, but as you can see, it's only eight teams are going on playoffs. So you need to get in the top eight. And Chip is currently rank ninth. Um, and threes of Badlands are eighth. So. It's tight, it's tight, and let me know what your league's doing, how where you are. Um, there's not much in it, that is the thing, there is not much in it at all anymore. So, every win is important, every game is important. Shifts in um, trades are going to make a difference. But six and four, you're pretty much guaranteed to get in to the playoffs in this league at the moment. That's the magic score. That's what I'm hoping for next week. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's everything for me. Be sure to check out all of our social media. Got loads of things planned, Warhammer wise. Um, but please like, subscribe, all of that jazz. And chat to you soon. Bye for now, and happy hobbying.